almost 11.30 service. Oh, my gosh. I'm it so is excited. going up. Damn! Look at all up. these people. Look at all in the here. people. This is such a great day, uh, the day that the Lord has made. Yes. My name is Kevin Wright. Uh huh. And I'm the co-lead campus pastor here at Zion Greenbelt. And a woman, my friend, my 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 homie, needs no introduction. But I'm gonna let her introduce herself anyway. Hey, y'all. You know already know what it is. Who it is? It's me, Minister CK. CK. CK with the CKPK Takeover. That's right. Volunteer coordinator for Zion Anywhere, your online campus. Of Zion Church. That's so cool, man. And I love hanging out with y'all. We the love Zion Anywhere you hanging out family. With us. Oh my goodness. Because you know what? I'm always interested in where your anywhere is. Like right. are you in uh Florida? Uh -huh. Are you in Cleveland? California? Cleveland? Let us know in the chat where your anywhere is. We wanna know. That's right. Hey, it's the first Sunday. First Sunday of February? Of February. So what is that? It's two four two four. Oh, I'm not gonna I don't play numbers, but okay. okay. I don't play right. numbers, right, but cool. look, you know what you can bet on? What, what can I bet on? It's Black History Woo! Month. Woo! Come yes. on now. Black History Month now. in a leap year. Okay. So that gives us 366 days of blackity black, black, black. They gave us another day? Another day. So Woo! we get 29. Come on now. So the math is math. It's math and finally. Right. So in honor of Black History Month, we want to celebrate the rich culture and black history, okay. history overall, yep, I love within it. Zion Church. Across our five campuses, we know yep. that there is a history maker amongst us. We have a question. I love it. Hey, look, I think something about this church is unique and mm -hmm. might be history in the making. Okay. Our very own Keith Battle, our, our senior, senior pastor. shepherd, our senior pastor, uh -huh. he was a cashier here. Here at the church? Here at Kmart. This used this to be a used Kmart. To be a Kmart. That's right. That's right. And now. He went from cashier to CEO. So he's like Christ executive officer. That's man. right. That's right. I, I love it. it. I, I love, love it. it. I love it. So yeah, that's history in the making. We want to know about your history. So right. anybody that did a first, went to college, went to HBCU, uh -huh. did uh, discovered the moon. Let us know in the chat, okay? Who is your history maker? That's Drop right. it in the chat. That's right. All right, so we have somebody who was making history. Look at that face. What? Look at that face. Oh, hey, guys. Our who very own Pastor <laughs> who Randy Pike. Who let the gate over? Hey, you just, and you have a mic already. How oh did that gosh. happen? I, don't, I just He's walked into church. equipped for ministry. Ooh, okay. And All right. empowered. To serve. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh -huh. For ease, guys. Okay. I just, why, why I just. Are you here? Why are you here? Yeah, okay. You okay. I'm here because. Uh-huh. Off script is having a retreat. Off script, and off I said script. I'm going to interrupt the pre-show. Okay, okay, to okay. let you know. Okay, okay. You're preaching okay. already. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And rhyming. Hey, I might as well rap and preach. That's, That's right. Man. You know. So we got a retreat coming April 5th through the 7th. Okay. And we're going to be going to North Bay. It's in Northeast Maryland. They told me to put your mic put your up. Mic Just up. okay. Like a rapper, since yeah. you're already rapping. Right. Don't get me started. Okay. <laughs> Just in Northeast Maryland, right below Baltimore. Okay. Okay. And where our goal is to get 300 students. 300. Wow. And we, I would say probably say 50, 60 volunteers. Okay. So we Come need you for everything. Need yes. you we all. We want to drop okay. your kids off for a weekend, Love April it. 5th to the 7th, and pick them back up. Oh my God. We're gonna have it. We're gonna have a bus going how up. Much, how okay. much is all this though? That sounds like a lot for you picking up my kids. Yep. And you're keeping them for two days. And we feed them. You're feeding them too. Yep. I okay. feed them How much entertainment. Is that, it's $150. Go ahead. Oh, come on, man. come on. I go dropped ahead, the mic. Come go on. ahead, He's man. Gonna drop go the mic, ahead. And we're going to roll it. to the video so you we can got a video, it. too. You can hear more about it. Check out the video. Thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 2024 Off Script Retreat location. Let's go. Now, listen. I ain't got a lot of time, so I'm only going to say this once. Join us for the 2024 All Spirit Retreat. Registration is now open. The theme for this year's retreat is Ignite. All middle and high school students are invited to North Bay Adventure for a youth retreat experience to remember. The cost is $150. To register, visit znch.org backslash ignite. So that's it, guys. April 5th through the 7th, North Bay here, you, all of us, having a good time, showing who got the best reads. Ooh, oh, that my looks like a good goodness. time. I'm 
ready. I, look, if you and I could go, man, we could have a ball with I them kids. I think we could go. I think we're tall enough. I, I think you got to be at least this tall. Hey, hey, you know what? Anyway, so look, it is the first Sunday in February, yep. and guess what that means? What's it mean? We get to celebrate all the February babies that were hey. born. Happy birthday. Ba -ba -ba -ba. If it's your birthday, make some noise. Hey, shout out to y'all, but do us a favor. Do us a favor in the chat. Mm -hmm. In the chat, let us know when your birthday is, whether yeah. it's February 15th, right. February 29th, yep. or... February huh? 20, what? What? Uh, somebody's telling me it's... Your birthday this oh month. Oh, my goodness. February 27th. Shout out to okay, my mother and my father. Okay, that's my girl. Happy birthday February to 27th. Me. All love, right. Love it, love it. So, look, we got other things that we're celebrating. What's that? We're celebrating three of our ZA fam members who recently completed the right hand of fellowship. Three of them. Okay. Three of them. One let's... for the father, one for the son, one for the Holy Come Spirit. Come on. Let's, let's take a look. Let's meet them. Love it. My name is Olivia Sam. I'm from Clinton, Maryland. Um, I would say that God is my Lord and Savior um, because I do believe that Jesus died and rose again. Um, I just want to strengthen my faith. So I definitely do believe in Jesus. Um, joining Zion is just a way for me to strengthen that faith and start living in purpose. Hey, my name is Kendra Reddick. I watch Zion Anywhere. I live in Bethesda, Maryland. And the reason why I joined this is because I needed to find a, a church home to, to help me get through some uh, issues. I uh, recently lost my mom, so I think church is something I need to head on to. And I was christened and baptized, but I haven't really been in church to say that he is my Lord and Savior. That's another reason why I want to join the church. So I can make him my Lord and Savior and put him first. Hi, I'm Charlena. Um, I uh, live in uh, Newport News, Virginia. I uh, was introduced by my God sister, Angel Booker. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. And how do I know it? Is that I, I am a believer. I have been um, baptized and I know that he is with me all the time. On behalf of Pastor Joy Augustman and the entire Zion Anywhere family, I would like to say, welcome to Zion Anywhere! Congratulations to Olivia, Kendra, and Charlene. Hey, Charlene, congratulations. Oh, Charlene. Who popped in the play? Our senior class to come to say happy uh, uh, membership to you. Yeah. yeah, happy membership to Charlene. Yep. That's the one that uh, Anthony Hamilton sang about. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that is. Charlene, oh no. God, okay, look. If and you Kendra are... and Olivia. There you go. Got a, uh, Olivia. He came to say uh, happy, because the, uh, happy the, uh, membership uh, to y'all. Y'all made the right Kendra choice. Kendra and Charlene. Yeah. Nah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So that's look. Like they came up in that time where that's how you had to name a kid. Uh, you put a little uh on put the end. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Put a little, yeah. little sprinkle yeah. on it. You can't just say Kend. No, you can't. Or yeah. Olive. No, you couldn't. No. Yeah, you got to uh. And for Black History Month, we talked about you becoming a cashier mm. to a CEO because mm. this used to be a Kmart. Yeah. It used to be. Now, it's Keith yeah. Mart? I was... Is it a Keith Mart? Keith Mart? Oh, okay. The K. The K okay with the Keith Mart. Listen, okay. Listen. Yeah, man. I used to I used to work here. Nice. Nice. I, I wasn't that I wasn't that good. <laughs> <laughs> but you were here. I was here. You were here. I was here. Who you were knew? Here. And we're glad you were here. And now I'm you're here, here now. Even we're here. better. We're back. Okay. Better. All right. We're back. All right, Pastor Battle, oh, yeah. we're going to transition to service. Would you like to? I don't know what would I'm supposed like to say. Pray? How about uh, you pray? Okay, just pray. Just say a quick prayer. Quick prayer. Father, thank you for this service we're about to experience. Yes, Bless Lord. every part of it, every song that's yes, sung, Lord. every word that is shared. May it impact our lives. And we thank you. May keep the connection strong. Yes, yes Lord. God. And may lives be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks Amen. for being Amen. with us. Thank you. Thanks we're about to go us. into the oh, service we're going with into him. Service. Hey Amen. We're going in the service. Yeah, we're going into the we're service. In the right Thank y'all. We'll see you in the service. Come back after service. <laughs>
Zion Church Greenbelt. Anybody come to lay your burdens down? Do we have anybody here that loves Jesus today? We're going to lay it down right here. Here we go. Why should I worry? Why should I be afraid? Freedom's calling me to another place. God is waiting with arms open wide. Yes. Please don't carry all that guilt and shame. Give it over. He'll take it away. Joy is waiting. Put that weight aside. Yes. He's never failed you. Give them some praise, man. Father, while we're laying everything at your feet, we want to be careful to worship you in the meantime. I love you forever. I love you forever. I love you forever. Lord, can you say, I love you forever? I hear you. I love you forever. Let's worship together. Come on, say. I love you forever. Yeah. Yes, 
praise right there. Father, we love you forever and ever, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus, you're worthy. Hallelujah, Jesus. Worthy, 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 worthy is the Lamb. Yes, he is. Everybody glad he's the God that remains, that Christ remains. He's on the throne. He has all authority. Let's, let's sing this song. Here we go. I have seen a lot of things and I've been a lot of places. Stuck with me, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have heard a lot said and sometimes believe the wrong thing. Oh, 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 God. I've made choices I regret and I doubted your mercy.
soul You don't let go I remind my soul You don't let go, Lord You remain Oh, you never, you never let go Yeah, thank you, Lord It is a fact that we've given you so many reasons to leave. And not only didn't you let go, but you didn't change. The problem is a lot of us think of God like we think of ourselves, because the truth be told, if we did what, if he did what we did, and we got the roles reversed, we would probably leave us. I'm so gra gra grateful, God, that you didn't quit on us when we messed up. Have you ever messed up so bad that you said to yourself, I know he done with me. And not only wasn't he done, he rescued you, you survived it, and his favor is still on you. My God, thank you that you, that you still remain. I was reminded of why he remains in 1 John chapter 5, verse 8. It says there are three witnesses. There are, present tense, three witnesses. It says water, blood, and spirit. Water cleanses, the blood covers, and the spirit will correct your mess, okay? And when I thought about the blood, I, I, I thought about, do you know how impossible it is to get a blood stain out of your clothes? And I said, man, well, if it's hard to get my blood out, if, if my blood remains, imagine how it is if you realize that everything you did, everything you are, everything you've been through is covered in his blood, not your blood, his blood, and his blood is on you, which is why his hand is still there. Because even if you deny God, God won't deny you because he can't deny himself. And if you're really thankful, why don't you just give God about 30 seconds of praise that his blood covers you, all of you, everything you ever did, will do and has done. Thank you, Lord, that you remain. Thank you, worship team. Can we give it up for the baddest worship team on this side of the beltway? And thank God, when I thought he was through, he says, I got you. Well, it is so good to be in the house. Shout out to everybody that's tuning in online, dying anywhere under the leadership of Pastor Joy Agunterman. Uh, we are grateful for this time in our service. And while we're talking about covering, have y'all been blessed by the way Pastor Battle has covered us through this Adams fa Family series? If it's blessed you, man, just say amen. And if you don't know what we're talking about, if this is your first time here, do yourself a favor. Uh, go to YouTube and just type in Adam's family. It's going to bless you. Uh, well, this is the time that we get to uh, celebrate giving. Thank you, Lord, for another check and a week of income. Might not be all you wanted, but God still provides. And um, <clears throat> for those of you who are with us for the first time, we thank you. Uh, your presence is a gift. Uh, there are several ways that you can give to the work that's happening here at Zion. Uh, we don't do it to be cute. We just want it to be convenient. And you can choose the option on the screen that best suits you. If you're going to give by check or cash, we would ask that you would use an envelope. And then pass your offering to the left. And someone on our team uh, will be by to collect your offering. All right? Well, let's pray over the offering and over our time. Then I got a scripture that I want to share that may encourage you as it relates to giving. Uh, Father, we thank you because if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't thank you enough. Lord, we are so grateful because you did not give up on us. This offering is not nearly enough to, to pay you for what you've done. So, so, Lord, it's just our way of saying that is all yours. We trust you with it and may many lives be blessed by it. Now, Father, do what only you can do. Restrain me, fill me. And Lord, I ask that every soul online and in this room 
will be transformed by the truth of your word. We give you glory and honor, and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to share a scripture, uh, John chapter 12, verse 3, as it relates to giving. Uh, it says, then Mary took a 12-ounce jar of expensive perfume made with the essence of nard, and she anointed Jesus' feet with it, wiping his feet with her hair. And the house was what? Filled with the fragrance. But Judas Iscariot, the disciple who would soon betray him, said, this, that perfume was worth a year's, worth, year's wages. It, it should have been sold and the money given to the poor. Not that he really cared about the poor. He was a thief. And since he was in charge of the disciples' money, he often stole some for himself. Now, I was like, man, how did Jesus let him keep the money? And then I thought about it. And Jesus always let his followers take what's his because it's so much bigger than money. And I wanted to show you something that really blessed me. Um, all Judas could think about was that Jesus wasn't worth it. And all Mary thought about was that he was worth every penny. Um, Judas couldn't stop stealing and Mary couldn't stop pouring. And I asked myself, well, well, how could two people be so far apart when it comes to giving? Because giving always boils down to what you think about the question of how much. The reason Mary poured so much is because Jesus forgave her much. Uh, as a matter of fact, the Bible says that the house was filled with the fragrance. So it tells me uh, that her gratitude for what he had forgiven her was so great that she didn't just spend a lot, she poured a lot. When God is forgiving you a lot, you ain't thinking about how much you got to give. You're thinking about how much he forgave, and it changes the way you think about giving. And so I want to encourage you, when you give, just take a minute to think about, man, God, how much you have done for me. And if that drives your giving, we'll have more than enough to fill this house. Amen? All right. Well, let's jump in uh, to our time for today. I uh, took a walk back down memory road, and I remember that I got a message in class that the neighborhood bully named Boo Boo wanted to fight me after school over a girl that I was dating. I, I was wondering why I was so serious. We were in elementary school. But anyway, I, I was called um, Preach. I was known as Preach, and it probably had something to do with the fact I was the only kid in D.C. school uh, with a dress shirt, necktie, hard bottom shoes, and dress pants. And on top of that, I carried a Bible. Uh, now, the name Boo Boo uh, was like saying Debo from the movie Friday. Like, everybody was scared of Boo Boo. I don't even know why he wasn't in school, but he, he was just one of them guys. And you know, anybody with a name like Boo Boo can't be good. So I had an aunt that taught me how to work by faith, but I had uncles that taught me how to work with fists. And three o'clock came and a crowd gathered. And I remember going outside with every intent to beat the brakes off Boo Boo um, because um, I really had an issue uh, with something bigger than the fight. And as a matter of fact, there was a lot of posturing, but there were no punches thrown. And I wonder if God intervened even at an early age because my issue wasn't with Boo Boo. My issue was with what they called me. I got tired of being called a Christian, tired of being called preach. And I figured that if I can be known as a fighter, it would require me to kill my reputation as a Christian. And if I landed one good punch, I might have I won the fight, but I would have lost my witness. And I'm saying to y'all, you don't have boo-boo waiting outside them doors at the end of this service. But I will say that your reputation can cause somebody to either serve God or miss God if you don't build it right. And so I want to talk with you from the subject, building a great name. 
And if you don't mind standing with me as we look to God's word to get some instructions for how to build a great name. In Genesis chapter 10, verse 8, it says that Cush was also the ancestor of Nimrod, who was the first heroic warrior on earth. Since he was the greatest hunter in the world, his name became famous. It was proverbial. People would say, this man is like Nimrod, the greatest hunter in the world. He built his kingdom in the land of Babylonia with the cities of Babylon and Erech and Akkad and Kalna. Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. At one time, all the people of the world spoke the same language and used the same words. And as the people migrated where? They found a plain in the land of Babylonia. And what did they do? Yeah, they settled there. They began saying to each other, let's make bricks and harden them with fire. In this region, bricks were used instead of stone and tar was used for mortar. Then they said, come. Let's build a great city for ourselves with a tower that reaches into the heavens. Uh, this will make us, what's the word? TikTok famous. <laughs> and keep us from being what? All over the world. When the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building, and he said, isn't this cute? The people are united. They all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Can you imagine what would happen if we ever got on the same page and start speaking the same language and start uniting in our efforts? We could produce something that's so great that the only person that could stop it is God. Verse 7, come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages, then they won't be able to understand each other. In that way, the Lord did what? all over the world, and they stopped building the city. That is why the city was called Babel, because that is where the Lord confused the, lang the people with different languages. In this way, one more time, what did he do? Them all over the world. Verse 10, it says, this is the account of Shem's family. Two years after the great flood, when Shem was 100 years old, he became the father of a foxhood. Before you take your seat, I just want you to know that God knows what they said. But don't let what they said stop you from doing what God says. Because God is trying to take you to a place that's so much bigger than what they called you and so much further than where you are. But you got to learn how to build a great name. You can have a seat. Um, we all have been called names. Some of us have been called Big Bank Hank. And you don't even want to be that big no more. Some of y'all been called Fly Frida because you dress nice. Matter of fact, if you were light-skinned, they might have called you Redbone. And if you were my complexion, they might have called you Black. Or if you couldn't afford Tim's and you had Colorados or British Knights, they didn't call you anything because you couldn't get a girl. Um, and so you begged your mama to get you Nikes, and she brought you home stadias and told you money don't grow on trees, and you promised and vowed that when you got your own money, it was going to be high end for eternity. And um, some names were really cool, but some names are still costing you psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually. It is why Proverbs chapter 22 verse 1 says, choose a good reputation over great riches. And being held in high esteem is better than silver and gold. Why? Because one bad review can kill your business. One ill-advised post can cost you your job. And even if it ain't true, a name is so strong that it can cost you your brand. And if you don't learn how to build a great name, your future will be limited by what they called you. That was Nimrod's problem. It, it, Nimrod was in a situation where God called him to fill the earth, and he was not feeling it because they called him the goat. 
and he had too many followers to follow God. And the problem, the Bible says, is that they migrated east. Remember that direction, east. It's the same direction that Adam and Eve traveled when they were evicted from the garden because east is symbolic for a migration away from God. It symbolizes rebellion. It's like, um, you know, Nimrod was like a teenager who could not wait to get from under his parents' authority because he wanted to escape the expectation that came with God's brand. I've been there. And so he built this big old tower that reaches the sky because, you know, you got to work overtime to win the applause of people so that it's loud enough to drown out the call of God and the disobedience that we may wrestle with. I know I'm going to just talk to me for about three seconds. Sometimes you need people to say, you killed it because God is calling you to a direction that's different than their praise and if you can keep it loud enough you don't have to listen to what God is telling you and so God had to step down and step uh, uh, to, to, to Nimrod like Frank did to uh, Nicky Barnes in the American Gangster and Nicky said you know Frank we good and Frank said nah uh, you know brand names mean something Blue Magic is a brand name just like Pepsi uh, uh, what's the problem Frank well the problem is when you take my product and you cut it two, two three four five percent and, and you dilute it and, and, and you, th that's called trademark infringement. Uh, well, Frank, what you want me to do? You want me to change the name? Uh, I, I, matter of fact, I insist that you change the name. I don't care what you call it. You can call it red magic. Just don't call it blue magic. That's trademark infringement. And what I'm saying to you is when you let somebody define you or call you a name that defines you who didn't make you, it dilutes the potency of what God put in you, and God says that's trademark infringement. So sometimes I got to step down and stop what you're building because what you're building is too small for anybody to see me in it. I want to give you a trademark to build a great name. Y'all ready? Uh, here it is. History plus identity plus posterity equals a great name. I'll say it again. Say history. history. Say identity. identity. Say posterity. posterity. Didn't you feel powerful when you said that? Uh, equals a great name. And if you promote God, God will promote you. So how do we do this? Well, you, you find your mark in history. The second part of this trademark is that you make your mark with identity. And the last part of this trademark is that you leave your mark for posterity. Posterity is all about what you leave or pass down to future generations. And when you put them all together, you have a great name. So what do you mean when you say find your mark in history? Uh, Nimrod um, had a peculiar background. Uh, you see, uh, Nimrod was called the greatest hunter in the world, but his daddy, Cush, named him Rebel. Nimrod literally means rebel. And when you know the history behind his name, you may appreciate why he had a hard time promoting God's brand. See, in East Africa, um, was called Cush by the Greeks. And the Hebrew term for Cushy literally, literally means a black person. And so how this works, the story goes that God flooded the earth and Cush's granddad, Noah, got a full-time job filling the earth and spreading God's power everywhere. Noah had three sons. Y'all remember Noah? He had the boat? Okay, if you don't remember, go read your Bible. Uh, Noah had three sons. The sons' name were Shem, Ham, Ham, and Japheth. And from them came 
all the nations of the world. I want you to check out this table of nations because from Shem, we get Semitic people. Uh, those would be uh, where Israel and uh, people from the Middle East come from. And from Ham, uh, Ham literally means hot or burnt. It is where we get uh, black or African peoples. And then uh, Jap Japheth is the progenitor of European and Asian peoples. Y'all didn't know that, did you? That's all right, huh? Um, and so what happened was uh, Noah got drunk one day off some good wine, probably because of all the grandkids. And Ham saw that his father was naked and exposed him, while Shem and Japheth walked in backwards, and they covered their father's nakedness. And when Noah sobered up from his high, he remembered what had happened, and he cursed Ham's son, Canaan who happened to be the brother of Cush, the father of Nimrod. But he blessed Shem and Japheth. And Cush named him his son Rebel. And my question is, do you see why it may be a little difficult uh, for Nimrod uh, to appreciate uh, promoting God's brand? Because the story goes that black skin was the mark of the curse. Okay. Uh, and so I want to say to fathers, be careful what you say to your kids when you're angry because your words have power to mark your child. It can either break them or make them. Mamas, be careful how you speak about your child's father because the Bible says honor your father and mother and there is no behavior clause. That means that if you talk bad about the baby's daddy, it may indirectly teach the child to dishonor the father. The problem is the father represents the head and the head gives identity, direction, and vision. And if you cut the father off from the child, you may in, 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 in inadvertently raise up a generation of youth who act like they lost their mind and have no respect for authority. So you got to be careful what you say when you're high off your emotions and you're angry and you say something sideways that can mock your child for generations. Ironically, this idea of black skin being a curse literally was a reputation that was passed down from generation to generation to generation. And do you not know that it was the basis of modern day slavery? And when you couple that with a Scandinavian blue eyed blonde hair picture of Jesus. And when you add to that Leonardo da Vinci's Last Supper where all the disciples are Euro European in descent. And then you see Hollywood casting a picture of Egypt that's so lily white that you forgot that Egypt was part of Africa. There is possible that there's a generation of Rim Nimrods that rise up and think that the Bible ain't for them because why would I promote a God that it ain't for people who look like me. I'm just going to talk to myself for about three seconds. Somebody says, oh, Lord, here he go, passing and gone woke. Nope, I was never asleep. I was just watching. I'm saying this ain't about race. This is about clarity. It's just like if you buy a TV and that picture is out of balance because one of the colors is oversaturated, by default you know to adjust the color so you can get the right image because if the image is distorted, ain't nobody buying the brand. Do you hear what I say when I say that you got to understand how to find yourself in history because there's a migration of our people who are going east. It sounds a little bit different. They're moving away from God talking about crystals and burning sage and energy and we are, are now witches and uh, are leaving the faith talking about I'm just spiritual, I'm not Christian and concocted a brand of faith that was nothing like grandmama in them, the faith that sustained you, that prayed for you, that covered you, uh, that, 
that there's been a migration of our people moving east and they come up with a faith that's 20% Islam, 10% Christian, and 70% confusion. And the problem is that it's hurting generations. Our family tree is getting jacked up because you got good godly woman, women waiting on God to send a man. And when the joker shows up, she got to wait on a nimrod to get his faith straight because his beliefs are all over the place. You got to know your history. And so I want to establish a more colorful history for our viewing. I want to show you a picture of a family tree that maybe you were not aware of. Y'all remember Abraham? Yeah, he had a woman uh, a concubine by the name of Hagar. She was from Egypt, black. Moses had a wife named Zippor. Y'all know her? Black. Uh, Manasseh and Ephraim who comprised two of the 12 tribes of Israel. Do you know their mama was from Egypt? Black. Uh, Rahab, black. Ruth, black. David and Bathsheba, there was some controversy about her ethnicity, so I did some digging. But when I found out and looked at how stuck he was on the rooftop when he saw her, black, was no question about it. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, only, only. Y'all are the only ones can get a joker to forget his crown. Uh, 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 Simeon, in the book of Acts, chapter 13, is listed amongst the apostles, prophets, and teachers. His nickname in the text is Black. That's how dark he was. And he showed up at the meetings, and Peter was like, what's up, Black? I want y'all to know, they ain't start here. That was way back then. I'm telling you, Simon of Cyrene, who helped Jesus carry the cross. Black. I'm telling you, on the first day that the church ever started, when the Spirit was pulled out, on the day of Pentecost, black was in the house. Do y'all know the gospel writer, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Do you know Mark? You remember him? North African. Black. You didn't know that, did you? And I'm telling you, Nimrod, the first ruler, kingdom builder of all the earth, was unequivocally black. And I say that to say black history did not start in slavery. I'm telling you, your black history started with royalty. Get that picture straight. And if we can fix that, might help us deal with some stuff in our community. And I'm trying to paint this picture for you, that you don't have to go to Ancestry.com to study your history. Talking about I'm from Wakanda. I'm saying you can go to Waldorf and have a conversation with your grandparents if they're still alive or your mama and them and figure out the family secrets. You want to know what's in your bloodline because your struggles and your success is directly tied to your family tree. There are some blessings and there are some problems, but I'm telling you, you might get a clue as to what you are called to do just by looking at what's in your family tree. Before I forget, I want to give you at least a couple of resources that might help support the study of us as it relates to Scripture. Uh, there is a Beyond Roots and black, people, black presence in the Bible and the blessing of Africa. And this was profound. This isn't even written by a brother. This is written by a white guy who wrote How Africa Shaped the Christian Mind. Take a picture of it. Just keep it in your library because it may help you get a better picture of just how beautiful God made us all. And I'm saying to you, a lot of who you are has been passed down to you. And you sitting in the counselor's office having an argument about something that happened three generations before you and if you can't get to the root you'll never be able to get to the problem you hear what I say to promote God's brand and to and to build a great name you got to find your mark in history but you also have to make your mark where in, in identity yeah with identity make your mark where all right in Genesis chapter 11 verse 2 it says as the people migrated where east they found a plain in the land of Babylonia, and the Bible says, what's that word? They settled. It stuck with me. 
Some of us have gotten too comfortable. They got too comfortable and they settled because they were following Nimrod, the mighty hunter. God wanted to take them to a bigger place, a better place, but they got stuck in the place they were uh, because they identified with somebody else's success, which was less than what God had actually had for their lives. Okay, I'm going to say this to myself. Uh, you got to be careful when you're watching Instagram feeds and you're stargazing at somebody else's success because it can cause you to cut short the destiny that God has ordained for your life. We on there all day. Stop living vicariously through someone else's success. I want to say this Matter of fact, I'm going to say it to somebody online. Don't you settle. Don't you settle. Don't settle for anything less than what God is. God is calling you to a place that's bigger than the place you're in, and you can't see it because you've been studying limited. You've been looking limited. God is called. Don't you settle for anything less than what God has made you for. Where you are, it's not who you are. And, and, and there is more to you than what you do. Okay. There's something about Nimrod as it relates to identity that we can learn from. Uh, it says that Nimrod was the goat, a mighty hunter. You cannot kill something and be a hunter and a barber and a real estate agent and you make music, and you sell T-shirts out the back of your trunk. I'm not knocking your hustle, but when you know who you are and who you are not and where you are called to make your mark, you got to begin to cut some things and develop your identity so you can be known for who God called you to be and not you trying to search and be like everybody else around you. Uh, uh, God put something on Nimrod that made him so good and so great that even though he had a tricky family background, he was able to overcome what they called him, curse, and still became the goat. I don't know who's listening, but I want you to be clear on this. When you think about who you are and where you are and what you went through, the fact that you still graduated from school, the fact that you still raised your child, the fact that you made it through the, through the prison system and started your own business. I'm telling you right now, I bet you would you better give God some praise for your struggle. I wish my father was there, but he wasn't. But God, I'm thankful. That's part of my history. That's part of my identity. God, I wish that I had this kind. Stop wishing that your situation was like somebody else's. Why? Because your struggle is part of your brand identity. Part of the way you know who you are is what you've been through because God will take you through something that will be a solution to somebody else's problem. And if you stop looking at your struggle as a problem and start looking at your struggle as your brand, all of a sudden you might have something in you that can help generations and bring profit in for generations after generations. Do you hear what I'm saying as it relates to your identity? God, thank you for my struggle. Let me give you some questions that can help you figure out your brand identity. What am I good at? Don't just follow the script. Go to college, get your education, get a good government job with benefits. <laughs> no! What am I good at? What gives me energy? What do I do that's effortless? Where am I effective? What have been my experiences? And here's where you get your money. Where or what problem am I uniquely gifted to eliminate? You find that in the pain that you've gone through. I want to say it to you one more time because I don't want you to miss your brand. Uh, what gives me energy? Some of y'all are in jobs that's literally draining your energy, and it's a big neon sign. God says, I didn't make you for this. Don't you settle and get comfortable because the pay is good. I'm telling you that it will limit where God wants to take your future. And you might have to take a step out in faith, not in ignorance, but in faith. Says, God, I need to move into a space that gives me life. What's effortless? 
Get people around you that love you that can tell you, man, you, you all right with that? You, you nice? Yes, effortless. Where am I effective? Look at the results. The next, what are my experiences? Where did I come from? What have I gone through? Stop complaining about your problems, your money, your purse is in your problems. <sighs> what am I uniquely gifted to eliminate? Because if you have this, you can make a mark. And so if you're going to build a great name, you find your mark where? In history. And you make your mark where? Identity, you got it. And then you leave your mark for what? God planned to leave his mark for future generations, but Nimrod wanted to make his mark without God. And he wanted his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And the problem is that what Nimrod was building was himself. And he was trying to build his brand without God. Couldn't even get God nowhere on his feet. I don't want to be associated with God. The way posterity works is that you pass on God's gifts from one generation to the next. And so that after you're gone, God still gives glory. Posterity is better than prosperity. It is a part of prosperity. And what I'm saying to you, when you have pos prosperity, prosperity is about you being lifted up. Posterity is about you being spread out. So that long after you're gone, your work is still working for you even when you're in the grave. Ah, and if you work it right, it's called a franchise. Even while you're living, if you learn to pour yourself into something bigger than you, it can feed you while you're in the bed. Ah, I'm going to talk to just about three people right now. Uh, you got to understand, I wish somebody would stop. We got too many gifts going to the grave without being shared. Can somebody pass on the macaroni and cheese recipe so every generation don't have to start from scratch? Come on, if you're running a business, can somebody write down the SOP, that is the standard operating procedure, so that somebody can follow your steps and produce something of excellence? Uh, if, you, if, you, if you're leading a team, who's behind you? If you're running a business, who are you pouring yourself into? Where is the blueprint. I am telling you, in order for you to have posterity, you got to have systems that reproduce excellence for generations after generations after generations. Steve Jobs did it. We buy every iPhone they come out with. I'm saying God put something in you that should be multiplying for generation, for after generation, for generation, and you can find yourself not only blessed, but many generations after you will be blessed. As a matter of fact, God looked at what Nimrod was doing. was like, nah, this ain't my plan. You trying to build you up, and I'm trying to get me out. And so he came down, and he confused the language. And in verse 9, uh, he scattered them all over the world. And in verse 10, you see these words. This is the family of Shem. And Shem was blessed by his father, Noah. Shem's name literally means name or reputation. Pause. Shem was born with Nimrod worked for. And if you learn how to promote God, God will give you what somebody else is working for. It's in your name. His name carried a blessing with it. And the idea of being blessed was to pass the blessing down from generation to generation. So Shem passed the blessing down to uh, his child, Terah. And Terah passed the blessing down to his son, Abraham. And Abraham passed that blessing down and his rep reputation became known as the father of many nations, the father of our faith. Matter of fact, he passed it down so good that Abraham takes us to a name that's unlike any other name. As a matter of fact, he, he, this name is so good that they wrote a 66-book volume, best-selling book of all time, uh, written over 1,500 years by 40 different authors in three different languages across three different continents. Uh, matter of fact, this name is so good that it fulfilled over 300 prophecies. The odds of 300 prophecies being fulfilled by this one name is literally 10 to the 157th power. This name is so good that this name trained 12 
produced 120, 120 heard one message, and they produced 3,000, and the rest was history. This name is so good that it opened the eyes of the blind, uh, walked on water, touched the tongue of the deaf and, and the mute, and, 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 and this, this name is so good that he fed 5,000 with two fish and five loaves of bread. The name is so good uh, that literally uh, they tried, they killed him and put him in the grave, and he said, look, I hold my fish down because he got up from the grave on the third day. And the name is so good that when he got up, he walked through walls, ate a fish dinner, and then appeared to over 500 witnesses. The name is, is so good that the demons tremble at this name. There is no name like this name. This name is so good that it's the only name that TV will censor. You can cuss, you can swear, but if you try to give this name any kind of glory, they will cut that name out. Why? Because there is no name like this name. It's the only name under heaven given to men whereby we must be saved. It's not like Allah or Buddha or it's not like Confucius or Charles Russell Taze. This name is like no other name. The name is so good that it says on one day every knee shall bow. Uh, that's every black knee, every Puerto Rican knee, that's every Japanese knee, that's every agnostic knee, that's every atheistic knee, uh, that's every knee. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that this name, what's the name? Jesus. What's his name? Jesus. It's that name that has power and authority and dominion. It's that name. That's the brand that God said is the blessing that will cover all peoples, regardless of your background, creed, ethnicity, or sins. I got you covered because there is no name like Jesus. So, Lord, how do I promote this brand? Everybody that walked in here, whether you know it or not, had a label. And if you got a blank label, I'd like for you to take that label and put it on you. That label represents what they called you. Some called you lazy. Some said you too old. Some labeled you retired. Some labeled you not smart enough. Some label you uh, 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 not black enough. Some labeled you too white. Uh, some labeled you too short. I, I don't know what label they put on you. But labels have a way of limiting you because you begin to, find, to define yourself by what they called you. And I'm saying to you, you have to be intentional about dealing with the label. Do you know why labels are so hard to take off? Because when you put it on, you never properly addressed it. So I want you now to do something that I hope you never forget how to do. I want you to take the label off. You say, Pastor, I struggle. I'm struggling with this now. Uh, because I got, my, I got my MBA in YMCA and my PhD in NAACP. In fact, I'm the GOAT, and I'm saying it's possible to be a successful failure. In that, you have become skillful and masterful of working hard to pr prove who you are not. And if you got to prove yourself, you will lose yourself. You got to learn how to get back before God. It says, I am bigger than the label, even if that label is the highest level of learning you can achieve because God is possible that I worked hard to be successful for me, but I can't promote you because I'm getting paid good, but I won't promote you because I don't love what I do. You can't promote what you don't love. And God says, if you just do what I created you to do, I am promising you that maybe it doesn't sound as big to them, but your impact will have, will bless generations if you're willing to do more than just what they called you. What I'm saying is, some of y'all are smack, right smack dab in the middle of what God has called you to do. And you tempted to move east because you've been watching other people and you no longer feel like what you do is good enough. 
You put a label on you, not good enough. I am telling you that if God didn't put that on you, don't you put it on yourself. I've been through it. I remember wondering, is this good enough? And God says, man, if you don't pick up them clippers and take that little, little wooden box and you cut hair for my glory, every hair that you, every head that you cut, I want you to mark it for me. I'm telling you, what God has given you is more. Stop chasing dollars and start chasing destiny. And God said, man, I will use you in a way that your mind can't conceive. It's bigger than what they called you, and it's bigger than where you are. Our lives have been limited by labels that God never put on us, and we can live our lives and miss our mark. So let me show you how this works. Now that you took the label off, or even if the label is still on, I got a name and a brand that's bigger than anything they ever called you. If you got the label Jesus, I want you to take that off, and I want you to put it on your chest. Yeah. If you got that name, I want you to remember there is no brand bigger than that name. And as long as what you do in word or deed is to spread him out. God will take something small, multiply it, and bless nations with it because there is no name bigger, better. You already have a great name. Part of the trick bag has been convincing you to operate without being under that name because there is something about the name Jesus that will change your history, your identity, and your posterity for all of eternity. Get comfortable wearing his brand. There's something about the name Jesus.
Wow, wow. Something about, I wish I could sing like the late, great Rance Allen. But I'm sure if you just I can, it in your own. I can try to hit that on. note. Yeah, you can. No, you, yeah, you got faith in me? This, 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 this is my sister. She got faith in me, man. Pastor Larry, I had to take notes. He had so many great points, so many. The, one of the things, he gave us five questions, maybe six. And he says, what gives me energy, right? Energy. What gives you energy? What's effortless? Uh -huh. Where am I effective? Where am I? Where's my experience? And the last one was, hey, what's the problem that burdens me that I'm gifted to solve? Mm. Mm. That, that, that part right there, I, for me, when it comes to, to, to loving on people, to, to feeling that God has called me right. to help the hurting. That's good. I don't know what your purpose is, but God has a purpose and a plan just for you. Amen. Exclusively. Woo. Exclusively. He made you unique, just right? You. Unique. Love it. Love yep. it. Love it. Yep. Love it. So, what we got going on later? So we got a question for the people. We have a question for the okay. people. Okay. So in relation to the message, yeah. what have people called you, right? People have called you something. Okay. But what has God called you? Ooh, what that's does good. God call what does God you? say about me? Yeah, what's he say about you? PK? Oh man, I love he hey, for me personally, uh -huh. I know we're gonna answer it later, but right. for me personally, uh -huh. he calls me his own. He does. His own. He does. I love it. I love it. I love it. He I calls love it. me daughter. We wanna know what he calls you. Put it in the chat. Put it in the chat all for right. us. And while we're waiting for you mm -hmm. all to put it in the chat, yep. we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and say if you're doing a faith journey, if you want to know more about Christ, if you want to say, you know what, I, I know a little bit, but mm -hmm. I need some help. We have help just for you. If you type next steps mm -hmm. to 51555, I guarantee you we won't spam you, family. But we just want to help you in your faith journey. Amen. Amen. We are here for you. And so we want to share something exciting that Zion has coming up okay. in partnership okay. with PBS. The PBS? The PBS. Wow. So wow. check out this wow. video and then we'll be back to talk more about your responses. Gospel is my foundation. It's a celebration of faith. We're honoring the legacy of praise and worship through song. Well, since we're celebrating Jesus, give God a hand of praise. Join me, Amen. Henry Louis Gates Jr., for Gospel Live, February 9th on PBS and the PBS app. All right. Tell oh us a my bit goodness. About this experience, Yo, Captain. we're going to have a similar experience uh -huh. here at Zion Greenbelt Ooh. next. No, Friday the 15th, the uh -huh. day after Valentine's okay. Day. We're going to have a similar experience. Uh -huh. The doors open up at 615 mm -hmm. and the program starts at 7 p.m. I guarantee you, family, you're not going to want to miss it. All you're right. not going to want to miss right. it. All right, we're going to have a panel discussion, I heard. Something yep. similar. So that's what I hear. That's what I hear. Exciting. All right, so let's see what people are saying in the uh, chat. Right? Did they, oh, okay, there okay. we go. We let's got see. people just so like that. We yeah. ask and we shall receive. That's oh, it. So Miss <laughs> Hutchins says, uh -huh. bless, God calls her blessed and a highly favored child of Ooh, God. I like it. Don Sr. said he is called his favorite Okay, okay Don Sr., I love it. Uh -huh. Robin S. said he is, or she is called a helper by God. Ooh, I Woo. like it. Come on. And Bonnie said God calls him redeemed. Okay, I love redeemed. that. Latoya said fearfully and wonderfully made. I see you in Psalms 139. Okay. I see you, Latoya. And KMS said saved. Okay. Man for that. I love it. Kendra said problem, conflict, solver. Come on. That's what he is. Okay, Kendra. And lastly, Nicole R. said heiress to an inheritance. Okay, Nicole. Nicole D. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I love it. it. I love it. I love it. Thank y'all for chiming in and letting us know what you think. We appreciate your responses and your engagement. So, speaking of being engaged, uh, okay. All right. We want you to remember you can host a gathering. Yes. Like one of our members, shout out to Rondell Martin, who hosted a gathering today. today. Right now, awesome. she is hosting love a gathering. Awesome. Love it. Love it. Thank you. Can, you. Yes. You text Z A Gather to 51555. That's right. You got it. Okay. And one more time for our VIPs. We want you to text Z A V I P to 51555. That's the only role they want to give me is 515. He can do it. I, can, I thought so I well. could do more, but he does it right every time. <laughs> okay, okay, I love. Okay, I love it. I love it. All right, listen. Don't forget to join us next week, ten minutes before service. Come back here for our pre-show experience. 
I love it. Hey, family, thank y'all for letting me hang out with y'all. It's been a beautiful day, a great experience. Everything that you learned this week from Pastor Larry and from the Word of God, right. make sure you apply it to your life. That's right. And we'll see you back here next week. That's right. Check out our announcements. Hey, Zion Church. Welcome to this week's In Focus Announcements. Come learn about Zion Church at our prospective member class, Under the Hood. The class is offered every first Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time and the third Sunday at 1.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time via Zoom. Visit znch.org slash UTH to register. Divorce Care is a 13-week co-ed support group that helps women and men work through separation and divorce. This is a safe space where you'll find helpful counsel and practical tools for decision-making. To learn more or to register for Divorce Care, visit znch.org slash divorce. Are you curious about the calling to ministry or what that means at Zion Church? Join us for the Calling Camp Interest Meeting on Saturday, February 24th to have all your questions answered. Register at znch.org slash M-I-T-I-M or scan the QR code on the screen. That's znch.org slash M-I-T-I-M. What's up, Oscar family? I hope you all have been having a wonderful school year. All students from 7th to 12th grade, mark your calendars for April 5th through 7th because we're having our Ignites Youth Retreat at North Bay Adventure Camp. To register for this retreat, visit znch.org slash ignite. Tickets are $150 and there is a $75 non-refundable deposit upon registration. Registration closes on March 1st, so be quick. Trust me, you don't want to miss this. We cannot wait for the fun and lifelong memories that you will create at North Bay. We hope to see you soon. Peace. To find out what's happening at Zion Church, visit zionchurch.org slash events or scan the QR code on the screen. Thank you.